Hello, and welcome to an overview of the step-by-step -step guide, Troubleshoot Direct Access in a Test Lab document. My name is Joe Davies. I'm a principal writer in the Windows Server Networking IT Pro writing team at the Microsoft Corporation. How does one learn about troubleshooting for direct access? Direct access is a combination of multiple network and infrastructure technologies, including IPv6, IPsec, digital certificates and public key infrastructure, websites, and DNS. It can be challenging with this mixture of technologies to determine the root cause of various direct access connectivity problems. Therefore, the goal of this document is to give you some trouble, direct access troubleshooting basics. To learn about direct access troubleshooting using a working direct access test lab as described in the document titled Step-by-Step -Step Guide, Demonstrate Direct Access in a Test Lab. The result of going through this document is that you will acquire knowledge of and experience with direct access troubleshooting tools and step-by-step -step techniques to determine root causes of some common direct access problems. Note that this document is not designed to help you troubleshoot a direct access test lab that is not working. In that case, please see the document titled Direct Access Troubleshooting Guide. Here we see the configuration of the Direct Access Test Lab. I'll just review it very quickly. We have four server computers, two client computers, and three subnets emulating an intranet and internet environments. DC1 is acting as an intranet domain controller and DNS server. App1 is a general application server. DA1 is our Direct Access server. INET1 is an in internet, web, and DNS server. NAT1 is providing network address translation between the internet and home net subnets. And Client1 is our direct access client that connects to the various subnets to show direct access client functionality. The first part of this document is to list and briefly describe the various tools that you have to troubleshoot direct access. Ranging from Windows Network Diagnostics, which you can initiate from the notification area of the Windows desktop, to a direct access um, troubleshooter in the troubleshooting item and control panel. There are a series of netsh.exe commands to show the state and configuration of system components. There's the ipconfig, nslookup, and nltest commands, which you can use to show TCP IP configuration, initiate DNS queries, and check for the status of, of connections to domain controllers, respectively. We have a series of snap ins. The Windows Firewall with Advanced Security Snap-in can be used to view the, the active list of connection security rules and IPsec Security Associations, or SAs. The resultant set of policy snap-in allows you to view the set of group policy objects that have been applied to a computer, such as the direct access client. And the certificate snap-in allows you to view the installed certificates and their properties. The next part of this document as you view the results of these tools in the working test lab as client one connects to the various subnets. So for example, we connect client one to the corpnet subnet and show the results of a series of net shell commands. NetSH DNS client show state shows the results of network location de detection. NetSH namespace show effective policy shows the list of active name resolution policy table or NRPT rules. NetSH ADV Firewall Monitor Show Current Profile shows the list of connected networks and their determined firewall profiles. The Windows Firewall with Advanced Security Snap-in shows us the currently active connection security rules and IPsec SAs. And ipconfig slash all shows the complete TCP IP configuration, including both IPv4 and IPv6 settings. We then connect to client one to the internet subnet and run these commands again and show the contrast in configuration. The main contrast being that when we're off the corpnet subnet, we now have active rules in the NRPT and active connection security rules in IPsec SAs. We then connect client one to the home net subnet and use Teredo to get to DA1 and show its configuration. And then with client one on the home net subnet, home net subnet we use IP HTTPS to get to DA1 and show its configuration. The next part of this document has you troubleshoot specific types of direct access connectivity problems. The 
The idea is to break the configuration of the working direct access test lab in a very specific way, have you experience the problem from the direct access client, and then walk you through the steps to determine the root cause of the problem. In the first problem, it appears that client one on the internet subnet cannot resolve intranet fully qualified domain names, or FQDNs. And here the root cause is that the wrong root CA was chosen in the direct access server setup wizard for IPsec authentication. Once again, we have a problem where direct access cannot resolve intranet FQDNs. And in this case, DC1, the intranet DNS server, was misconfigured to not listen for DNS traffic on its ISATAP address. The next problem is client one cannot access a specific intranet resource where the root cause is that app one, this intranet resource, has had the disabled components registry value set to disable IPv6. Next problem is client one is connected to the corpnet subnet but cannot correctly determine that it's connected to its intranet where the root cause is that app one, our network location server, has been configured to use the wrong SSL certificate. And lastly, client one cannot complete an IP, H IP HTTPS based connection because the DNS A record on INET1, our internet web server, is pointing to the wrong location for the internet certificate revocation list distribution point. All of these exercises are designed to give you some practice in going through the steps as defined in the Direct Access Troubleshooting Guide to determine the root cause of problems and give you some practice in using the tools and techniques to, to determine root causes of direct access issues. For much more information about troubleshooting tools for direct access, a general methodology for troubleshooting direct access connection problems from the direct access client, and step-by-step -step techniques for specific problems, please see the document titled Direct Access Troubleshooting Guide. If you're planning a pilot or production deployment of direct access, please see the documents titled Direct Access Design Guide and Direct Access Deployment Guide. For this document, please search for the document titled Step-by-Step -step Guide Troubleshoot Direct Access in a Test Lab or go to the URL indicated here. Recall that this document is using a base working direct access test lab configuration as defined in the step-by-step -step guide demonstrate direct access in a test lab and as a companion to this other guide. For a copy of the, that other guide for the base configuration, uh, search for the title or go to the URL indicated here. If you're just getting started with direct access, please see microsoft.com slash direct access. This is Joe Davies. Thank you for your time and attention.